10 hours or so, let it heat up, let everything dry out, and then just do that once a week, just keep an eye on it, and you won't have any problems. Okay. Right? okay. Excellent, okay. yeah. Lovely. Well, who's going to be first to cross the threshold then? Well, you're on the Are you going to carry me? Hello. <laughs> 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 you can try. Go on, here you go. So, first place I'll start is just underneath that bench seat on the side there. Da -da -da. Let me put my lovely booties on so I don't get well, off making by a mark us. on the carpet. So, <laughs> underneath here. So, in the very top corner over there, that is your 10 litre hot water system. Okay. Okay. Um, you see the little yellow tap that's sitting flat down at the minute? Yes. That is your drain off for the water system. So, at the minute with that closed, the water boiler's full of water and there's water in all your pipe works. Okay. Obviously, I've already said about winter time about draining it down. Oh, did she just... Oh, no, she's still on. Um, when it comes to winter time for draining it down, all you need to do is lift that yellow lever so it sits straight up in the air so like that. So that's open. Yeah. Okay. And and when it's on. open, it will drain all the contents of that water boiler down. And if you leave your taps open in the central position, yes. so in the middle of hot and cold, it will simply drain all the water out of the pipes and all the water in the van will simply drain out underneath that okay. hole. Okay, is that recommended to do every time we get on the road? Or is that not necessary because it's such a small volume? I do drain mine down at the end of every breakaway. Reason being, if I'm not using it for a couple of months, do I really want to reuse that water that's been sat in there for two months? No. Yeah. Personally, I don't, so I drain it off. Mm -hmm. Obviously, this time of the year, especially if you're leaving it anywhere, I would drain it down because we are getting to frost time. Yeah. And obviously, it doesn't take much. It only needs sort of four, four or five degrees and things will start freezing and up. where does it here. drain to? It literally drains out. Where you see the yellow tap, it drains out directly through the floor there. So it just goes onto the yeah, floor? Yeah, it just okay. goes onto the floor below. Okay, yep. but once you've drained it, just leave that up in the air because then, if there is any residual water in the pipes and it does freeze, it's got movement to move along the pipe. So, the only time you want to have it drop down is obviously now when you're using it in operation. Okay, so when you get to your site, all you need to do is just have it drop down yes. like that, connect your water system up outside, and it's the process of you pulling water through your taps which primes your water system and fills up that hot water boiler for you. Okay. So, obviously, if, if there's no mains water. That'll obviously use the first aqua roll, just filling that up. Well, it's only 10 litres, remember, and you've got a 40 litre aqua roll. Okay. Yeah, perfect. So, I mean, but, but how it works is, once it's got 10 litres in there, it'll heat them 10 litres up. Once you've used them 10 litres of hot water, the water will just run cold. Okay. And then you need to leave it, sort of 10, 15 minutes, let it heat back up. And then obviously you'll have another 10 litres hot water, but it's not a constant supply. It's not like an immersion boiler mm. where you've got a constant supply of hot water. You've only got 10 litres. Is litres. that 10 litres also supplying the shower? Yeah. It is also, okay. Yeah. Yeah, you'll find in the shower, you can't have like an half an hour, good old decent <laughs> shower. Yeah. But it is, they are, it is good enough so you can have, you can have a decent shower. Okay. But we're fine, obviously, if it's coming from the mains. No, because it's still got to get heated. No, it's still it? only 10 litres of hot water. Okay. I then, thought if it comes to the main, it'll just come straight through. No, but it's yeah, the cold. fresh water, the cold water will do, yeah. but for your hot water, imagine at home you've got a huge cylinder that's full of about 80, 90 oh, litres okay. of hot water, where inside the caravan you've only got 10 litres of hot water. Now, the hot water in here is hot. You can have it as hot as 70 degrees when it's on the electric. Okay. So if you imagine when you're in the shower, you'll use more cold than you will hot. So believe me, you will not get in the shower on, on flat out hot because it will scold your skin. How long does it take to heat up? About 10, 15 minutes. Oh, right. There's no exact time because it's so many things of how cold it is outside, yeah. how cold your water is to start with and all the rest. But roughly it's about 10, 15 minutes. Okay, cool. So yep. all it means is if the lady's a bit of a shower hogger, I'd probably let her have a shower and then go and get yourself a bacon bath or something down the road and then just come <laughs> back and have your shower afterwards once it's reheated. Okay, yeah. um, other than that, the box that's just at the side there is for your alarm, but I'll talk about your alarm in a minute. The blue box here is the computer for your motor mover. Okay. And then here is what's called your consumer unit. So this is your sort of powerhouse for the caravan. This is where okay. all its power source comes from. Now, on the end here is a system shutdown button. What that does is isolate all the power from the 12 volt system. Okay. So if you're leaving it at... at if you're leaving it in storage where you've got no electric, I would switch that off because it will stop any drain off your battery. Okay. But obviously if you're keeping it at home and you can get a power source to it, I wouldn't worry about it too much because obviously you can plug it in at home and it will run the battery charger to keep your batteries topped up for you. But can, can you just leave it plugged in? Yep. 
Uh, you don't have to like leave it for a few hours and then disconnect it. No. You can pretty much leave it mains connected. Uh, but back the in time. the olden days with the older caravans, yeah, fair enough. If you left it plugged in for long enough, you'd blow the battery up eventually. Okay. Because they were all old, antiquated systems. But now in these new modern ones, no, you can quite happily leave it plugged in constantly and it won't do any harm. It okay. won't do any harm because the battery charge will literally just switch on and off as such when it's coming in and out. Okay, yeah. so system shutdown, as I say, isolates your 12 volt system. But if you guys are keeping it at home, I wouldn't worry about that because obviously you can just plug it in on your drive to keep the power charged up. Moving on down, we've then got reverse polarity. Now, are you planning on going abroad with your van? Uh, one possibly. Day. Possibly, yeah. possibly. Yeah. Main thing is the French and Germans are slightly backwards to us. All it is is their power is reversed. Okay. So their negatives are positive as such. So if you ever do, do go abroad and plug in, if you see that lit, that red light lit up there, well, it's letting you know there's a problem with the power externally. Okay. It won't power the van up because it shuts the power off inside that unit so it doesn't frazzle your electrics inside okay, it. So what do you have to do? So then it's either a rewire of your leads or an adapter externally. Okay. But most of the time the foreign campsites will, if you can speak the language, will help you out okay. as such to get the power on. Cool. So okay. there's an adapter that you fit on? Yeah, there's the an adapter switches. you can fit externally which just sort of ch crosses it back cool. over. Okay. We've then got battery charger, as I say, I would just leave that one on constantly. Okay. Because you know then when you're on the mains power, it's running the battery system and it's recharging back up the 12 volt system for you. Now, next one down, space heater. All that does is send the power to the control unit on the wall there and that's just the electric for your heating system. Okay. Okay, so it's the bottom one there is for your heater. Now, the second one over is for your water heater. So this one here is for your water heater. Okay. Now, if you don't listen to anything else I tell you today, <laughs> I will be a happy boy, but there's one and only thing. When you're packing down and you finish your breakaway, turn that off. Okay. Okay, reason for that, is if you leave it on, next time you go away, when you plug it into your site, you plug your electric in outside, you're chatting to Mr and Mrs Davis next door and gas bagging away about your journey, you know, someone nearly run into you and all the rest of that. And in the meantime, that's on, that's heating up the element inside there. It's like no boiling water. your kettle at home with no water in it. But do, so it doesn't have a no, detection? No, no, sadly yet. not in these ones. It's the one and only thing that wasn't, they haven't quite got it right okay. yet. So always when you're packing down, make sure you've turned off that water heater one. Yeah, so if that tank is empty, that must go off. Yeah. It's got yeah. a thermostat, yeah. so it goes off according to temperature on the thermostat. Yeah. But it doesn't work for the water as such. If there's no water in it, she will still heat yeah. up. Okay. So all you need to do is get yourself into a habit of turning that off when you're packing down, and then just remember, only turn that on once you've connected your water, you've dropped your valve, and you've pulled the water through your tap. Okay. Well, okay, yeah, we need to be careful with that one. You're right, that is the one and only, honestly, yeah. it's the one and only thing in here. Everything else, pretty much foolproof, perfectly yeah. fine. It's just that one and only thing. Because if you're showering and you use all 10 litres, if she uses all 10 litres, um, and there's nothing left in the aqua roll, and then that's still going, I want to switch that off until I've filled it back up. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah, it. That's really, it. that'll last five minutes. Yeah, but I mean, you've got your mains water fill out there, so if you're on a, a decent site like we are up here, where you've got mains water, you don't really need to worry about that because you've got a constant cycle of water as such. Okay. It's only when you're sort of wild camping as such that you've got no hook up anywhere, that, that, that then, yeah, you are right, once you've run out of that roll out there. But what most caravanners do before they start a shower, we'll check how much water's in the roll. Because believe me, there's nothing worse than getting off and through your shower. You're covered in soap and the water runs out. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? It's always embarrassing when you're out at the side of your van refilling it with shampoo on your hair. And all. We've all been there. So, as I say, one and only thing, just make sure you're turning that off when you're packing down. In fact, I'm even going to turn it off now. Okay, so okay. even I don't forget to turn it off. Okay. Then we have got 12 volt fuses, 240 breakers. Now, there is a fuse diagram inside your manual inside there which lets you know which fuse does which. But obviously, same as in your house and that, you only need to worry about that. If you're having electrical problems, then dig your manual out and have a flick through and just double check that it's not a fuse that's blown. And okay. they're just standard 12 volt fuses, the same as you get in any um, car garage. Obviously, again, Salop Leisure do all the best 12 volt fuses. <laughs> and that's about it for in there, if you're happy with everything. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah? Yeah. Perfect. So. I'll take the control panel above the doors now. Now believe me, that's the com that's the most complicated things done now, so the rest of it's quite straightforward for you. So, control panel above the door, so simple. Power off. But you see, do you notice these two lights are still on? Yes. These are because they're directly wired into the 240, your main supply. So okay. imagine if I pull that blue, blue cable out, these will go off. 
But other than that, when you're plugged into mains electric, these are always live. Okay. But you can, say you're going out in an evening and you want to switch all your lights off, all you need to do is just manually turn them two off. But other than that, all the rest of the lights will go off when you switch your main panel off there. Okay. Okay. And then, if we're not connected to mains, yep. and you press the power on, you'll get lights from the 12 volts? Yeah, 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 yeah. So imagine if I take your power right now and switch this on, everything will come on bar these two. Okay. So because these two are connected to your 240, your mains electric. Okay. Okay. So, other than that, what it's showing us up on the screen, what it's showing us up on the screen, up here it lights up with the mains, obviously to let us know we're on mains electric. Yeah. It lights up above the caravan, that's letting us know we're running on the leisure battery. Okay. And then obviously it lights up just on the panel there. So when you initially switch it on and you're on mains, they're the three lights that you want to see. Okay. Other than that, got view levels, shows you the condition of your leisure battery. If we were plugged into the main or your vehicle, it will show you the power in the vehicle as well. Okay. So this is a good one. You know when you've got it at home and you want to check on the condition of your battery, just simply come in here, turn it on, press view levels, and it will show you. Once your battery is sort of getting down into the orange, that's when you need to think about charging it up. Mm -hmm. Without the battery charger on, it will always read 12 volts. But all it is, imagine now it's got the extra charge going in there, it will always read 14, which lets me know that the battery is fully charged. Okay. Battery oh. select? Yeah, so battery select is where you can change over from running off your leisure battery and run off the 12 volt system in your car. Ooh, okay. But, yeah, <laughs> yeah, the main thing is if you, you flatten that home. car down, yeah, you're not going anywhere. Okay. So really, that's again, that's for people that go wild caravanning as such, where they're in the field, they're in the middle of nowhere, they've got no electrics, they flatten their battery, and I don't know, they want to do some cooking or something, so they'll plug it into the car just so they can have a sparkler or something for the cooker. Okay. Yeah, but it's, I mean, if you go into modern sites, it's a, it's a thing in the past, so you don't really need to worry too much about it. And then, water pump. So, you're here now, you can't hear your water pump running. The only time your pump will run is when you're asking for water or you've run out of water externally. Okay. Okay. So, for filling up your water system, all it simply is is attach your water pipe outside and put it into your aqua roll. Obviously, you have water inside your aqua roll. Then, all it is is cold tap first. Sorry, she was splattering out because I had your pipe off before. Oh, I've got a funny feeling I've run out of water. Give me a few seconds. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing more embarrassing than you want to end, Dave. <laughs> What? Mm -hmm. right. Let's try again. Oh, I'm definitely having a beer when I finish. We are definitely going to have three or four tonight. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe hey. in here. Yeah. Yeah. Why yeah. not? Why not? So, oh, yeah. so, always do the cold first, once you've got constant running water like that, you know it's coming up out the Acheron and it's coming into the vehicle. To fill up the hot water boiler and to pressurise up your system is just simply come round to the hot side and leave it running on the hot. Okay. okay, once you've got constant flowing water like that, you know that boiler's full of water now. Okay. Okay, obviously once you've drained it down and you'll see the steam coming off her, so she's certainly hot water. Um, once you've drained it down and refilled it, it'll take about a minute, maybe a minute and a half. You imagine by the time it's pushed all the air out the system, yeah. and you've got running water to your tap. So does that carry on pumping and fill that tank up? Yeah. Even though you switch that just to keep yeah. it top? Yeah, so that's why you hear it running afterwards. What it is, it's pressurising up the system. So as soon as you take any water away, mm -hmm. there's a gap in the pressure, then it's refilled up by the water coming back through. Okay. So you imagine the system's constantly pressurised. Once you pulled water through in the kitchen, then just move to the back, do it in the bathroom sink, and then do it in the shower. Okay. 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 Yeah. Happy cool. with that? Yeah. Yeah, yeah perfect. So what should I do next? We'll get the heat it. And does that pump thing go, do you have to turn it off and on? The only time, no, you can leave it on now because you hear it's not running. The only yeah. time it will run now, A, if you're asking for water, or B, if you've run out of water externally, yeah. it's looking for water to repressurise it up. So all you need to do is switch it off, refill up your Acarol, switch it back on, and just pull the, pull the air back out of the system. So okay. simply pull air through the hot and the cold side of the tap. All right. Okay. okay. Perfect. So I'll come to your heater controls here. So. The bottom one relates to the electric for the fire. The gas controls for your fire are on the top. Okay. Okay, so I'll do your electric first. I'll step outside, it gives you a bit of chance to see it more. So what it is, the grey collar around the outside turns. 
it turns down once to 500 watts, it turns down again to 1000 watts, and then it goes all the way back up to the top for 2000 watts. Okay. All it is is the more wattage you send to it, the faster it'll heat up for you. So it's a bit like old Granny May's electric bar fire. Mm -hmm. So imagine 500 is one element, 1000 is two element, and 2000 is four elements going at the same. So the more power you send, the faster it'll heat up for mm -hmm. you. And then all it is is your thermostat is in the black one on the outside. Nine is the hottest, down to one, which is the lowest. Is, is, is one just um, frost? Yeah, one's sort of like a like a low tick over sort of thing, like an ambient. It may be the sort of thing you'll have on you know, like a summer's evening when it's just getting a little bit chilly and you want a bit of background heat, then yeah, fair enough. But obviously deepest, darkest winter, I would crank it up to sort of eight or nine on that on a thousand or even two thousand. So is your only heating in this caravan that? Yes. That? And can you leave it on all night? Yes. Yeah. 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 I had a van very similar to this. And obviously when you're by yourself in a van it gets cold yeah. so what I tend to do I'd wake up at like four or five o'clock in the morning absolutely divering so before I go to bed I'd set mine on 500 and then put it on about sort of six or seven <coughs> around that and all it means it just keeps like a low heat in there so all it does it stops you waking up in the middle of the night absolutely freezing so, cold yeah it's on the thermostat yeah. yeah 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 so the fire will just kick in and out for you all right bless you but obviously you may find Excuse with the me. two of you in here you may find it does keep, they do, that you are quite warm inside the caravan. Right. So see, see how you get on, see how yeah. you get on, but the heat is there. So, electric on the wall here, but then down on here is your gas. Okay. So for your gas controls, it's on the end here, so simple to use. All it is is turn it, hear it clicking? Yes. Yeah. All you do to light it is hold it down. Da, da, da. So I know he turned my gas off before, and I bet he hasn't turned it back on. We'll stand here and have an embarrassing 10 seconds and I'll go and check your bottle. <laughs> oh no, there we go. So, lift off, you've heard it woof. You can if you want to for your own peace of mind. Look directly down that hole and you'll see the pilot light in the oh, back yeah, corner. See see it? Down there, yeah. okay. But believe me, with these fires, if it hasn't lit, it keeps ticking at you. Okay. So you know it's lit. They, they are safe, the gas systems in there. You've got nothing to worry about. Okay. And then obviously it's just one to 10 on there for your thermostat. Okay. So, electric temperature there. Gas temperature on here. And you turn it off, gas? So turn your gas off, all you do is turn it back past the zero. Can you hear it still ticking? It's because I haven't quite turned it enough. Okay. So there you go. Once it's turned all the way around, she's shut off for you. Okay. Now this side is your fan circulation. So as well as the radiating heat out the front, you can also blow the air around in. If you look, you see the vent at the front, the burgundy coloured vent yeah. down there? Or the beige coloured vent. And there's also a couple more down the other end, there's some in your bathroom. And there's a fan system in the back of this, once it's up to temperature, the fan will kick in and blow the air around for you. Oh, so it's not just good. the heat out of here, it circulates the air around. That's quite good. To get the fans to work is A. Okay. So A is auto, auto mode. What that will do is when the fire's at temperature, the fans will kick in, blow it around for you. Once it's up to temperature, the fans will shut off. Okay. But again, if the temperature drops, the fans will kick in again and blow the air around. So and it'll so kick off. Automatic and that's just hand manual on. Yep, yeah, yep, yeah, manual. So it is just a run. Okay. So you can hear the fan running now. That's a really good thing in the summer. You know, you have them really stuffy days where there's no air. Fair enough. It's not air conditioning, but it's still like it's like putting switching a fan on the side. All it does is just adds a bit of fresh air. Oh, so you can actually run it without the heating. Yeah, on. yeah, you it's can run it without like the heat. A cooling yeah. Fan. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Mm. Okay. Fantastic. So that's your awning light. Oh, so that's the light outside here. Yeah. There is just various light switches everywhere. <laughs> I've tended to stop going around and showing people all the light switches because I'll let you have fun and games <laughs> and let you figure out where them all. Believe me, there is a light switch for every single light inside this vehicle. Fair enough. <laughs> so, um, front bed. So all it is is, you see your one, two, three handles yeah. and then the fourth handle, up from the fourth handle are your bed slats. Yeah. So all it is is you pull that out all the way to the end of here Always pull it out as straight as you can and push it back in straight because they are a swine. If you get it caught off, they will all drop off and yeah, you'll end up swearing and kicking it. So when you do it, just pull it out nice and straight all the way down to the end. And then all you do is reposition your one, two, three, four cushions. Always turn them upside down. Okay. But the order that you put them is to however you feel comfortable sleeping on them. Okay. Okay. But yeah. I'd definitely sleep on the underside because they're nice and flat and you won't wake up with butter marks on you. <laughs> Okay. 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 But as I say, gently, always try and be as straight as you can with pulling it in and out. Okay. Okay. Yeah. 
Cool. So, other than that, what should we do next? Our radio, I'll keep radio. walking away. The, the, the table, how far out does the table come? So, pulls out and then flops back on itself. So it doesn't come out anymore? No, no, there's a standalone table though, which you can use. So what this is designed is your lovely two of you can eat. Okay. But imagine if there's four of you, yeah, there you've will got be. a standalone table that you can just put in the centre. Okay, and that's here, is it? Yeah, yeah, that's yeah. inside the vehicle as okay, well. Okay, cool. Yeah, so you get two. You just get this sort of smaller one at the front, but then you have got the bigger one, so you can put a table of four inside here as well. Okay, okay lovely. Okay. Yep. Yeah. Perfect. So, yeah, oh no, yay, there we are, so just a car, standard car stereo, I won't patronise you with that because I'm sure all of us know how to use a car stereo. Yeah, Okay. Does, only other thing, does it have, uh, it's just got It's box. got an auxiliary, yeah, it's yeah, yeah, it hasn't got a USB but it has got auxiliary Engine in there, so fine. yeah, you're okay. fine to plug anything in. Um, inside the top here are all your manuals, so if you haven't taken anything on board or you can't sleep at night, there is literally a manual for everything. So for the caravan, for the lighting system, for your heaters, for your boiler, for your fridges, everything. So there's plenty of reading information in there for okay. you. Fridge. So on off for your fridge is just a little button at the front there. Okay. So, once she sorts herself out. Here we go. Now what it's showing me on the screen at the minute, it's showing me the fridge is running on gas and we're at full temperature. So to change the power setting on your fridge, it's just this button here and it's as easy as okay. the plug symbol is mains electric, the vehicle battery symbol is for when you're towing down the road. So, so when you're towing down the road you can have your fridge on and it runs off the alternator off the car. Okay. But when it's on the vehicle battery it only holds the temperature of the fridge. So always run it on either gas or electric first, get your fridge nice and cold, put your items in, let it get nice and cold again and then just before you set off change it over onto the vehicle battery. Okay. <coughs> what it will do, it will hold the temperature of the fridge for you. So, you, so your wine or your, uh, your bubble is nice and cold for when you get there. Cool. Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. And then, uh, as I say, this side is just changing the temperature. Obviously all five bars are the coldest down to one is sort of the lowest temperature that the fridge will run. Okay. What, what do you need to set it on normally? What, what, what do you need? Well, about three or four. It all depends on, I like my milk icy cold, so I have my fridges really cold. Yeah. And obviously when I mean milk, I mean cider. But. <laughs> <laughs> like it. Um, other than that, yeah, yeah, you've seen the catch across the top. So, cooker next. So, one to six here relates to your electric ring on the back. Obviously the electric ring only works off the mains electric, doesn't work off your 12 volt system. We've then got one, two, three gas burners and a lovely 12 volt igniter. Okay. So it's just as easy as turn hold, ignite, turn hold, ignite, turn hold, ignite. It's easy okay. as that, Could three gas burners it. or electric. Yeah. Then below, grill pan and handle, grill again is just turn hold, and ignite. Okay. What's your grill on? Oh, don't worry. That's nothing to be. It is the new <laughs> chemical they've given us to clean out our uh, ovens. We haven't paid yet, have we, love? <laughs> 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 We're gonna have a nice long sleep. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, don't. I don't know what they're using now, but it's. Uh, That's quite nice. Yeah, okay. It soon burns off, it soon burns off. Believe me, what I'll do while you're in doing your paperwork, I'll come in here and I'll burn it off for you. It's, it takes about a minute and she's all off. Don't worry, it's not on fire, don't be alarmed. Not alarmed, don't worry. <laughs> <laughs> the wife doesn't look so sure. Yeah. <laughs> and then there's your oven there, your grill in the bottom. That yeah, oven in the bottom. Okay. Yeah. Okay, cool. And then underneath is what's called your pots and pan store. So what this is for is all your heavy pots and pans, like your heavy frying pans and that. Imagine if you put them a pie mm. and they jump out the cupboard, they're going to do some damage on the bank. So just store everything like that underneath there. Okay. And the plug sockets that are inside there relate to your electric ring on the top there. Okay. Okay, so if your electric ring isn't eating up, I'll put a million pound, you've caught the plug in there with a pot handle or something. Okay. 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 Yeah. Happy with that? Yeah. Love it. Now I'm smoking it. What I'm going to do is I'll just pop that into the oven because I want to burn off the grill for you. So, other than that, ba -ba -da -ba -da. draining board and chopping board should be inside there. But I'll take it out oh, no, there. <coughs> so, draining board, chopping board, they do fit. There's a little slidey, you see the little grey shelf on the bottom there? That's where they'll live for travelling. Okay. Okay, so you can slide them inside there so they're right away. Okay. Okay. 
Oh, it's a bit of a daft cupboard. We've also got your wash up bowl as well. It's mm -hmm. a rarity because they don't normally come with it. Inside the one up here. So, there's your TV point. Now, you know I said external satellite? That's the screw threaded one on the top there. Okay. So at the minute that's on satellite. If you want to change it to TV, all you need to do is get a screw and attachment to go over the top and you can turn it into a TV aerial. Okay. So that's just external. <coughs> Internal. Because you've got one on the roof. <coughs> yeah, the one outside the roof. Sorry, am I yeah. choking you out? Should we open another window? No, 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 I've got a cold on fire. Oh, okay. Yeah, that's fine. So um, the other one, the normal TV aerial one you can see there, relates to your onboard one. So that's the TV signal coming from here. Yes. For the one with the screw bit is the one that's coming from the cupboard on the side there. Okay. Okay? Okay. And then, obviously, inside here, if you haven't found it already... ...is a lovely TV stand. Okay. What size is this? <laughs> About a postage stamp. Yeah, well, what is it? Maybe something inch. like that? I reckon, yeah. 17 inch. If you're lucky. Yeah. They were good in the day because they were big, weren't they? You're like, wow, look at this flat screen telly, it's amazing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But it's good odd. enough for the kids just to keep them interested. Yeah, what I'd tend to do, in mine, I didn't bother with this, I just had a telly flat on my deck here. And obviously, say, when I was in bed with watching it, all I'd do is open up the blinds here, turn it around and watch it that way. And then obviously, if you sat in the living room, all I'd do is turn it around and watch it that way. So it's, mm -hmm. it's your choice, really. These were good in the day when flat screen tellies were all the rage, but now I think you can get a better size telly just to put on the bottom. But it's there as an option if you wanted to yeah. use it. That's not a good, that's not a bad idea, actually. Yeah, it's yeah. easier than having one inside there. And then plus it just means you can just take one out of your house when you go away. Thing, does it rotate so you can... Yeah, yeah, it yeah, yeah. Yeah, it does turn around so you can have it into the uh, into the bedroom as well. Yeah. But I mean, you look at the size of that telly, it is a little post-it but stamp. Unpaid. Yeah, yeah, you might as well, don't screw an iPad to it, but yeah, you might as well put an iPad in there. And all it does, it just pushes it up, locks in place, both ends, and then just turn your lock screen as well. Okay, okay. Perfect. Yeah, is that, is that lock properly? Let's lower down on that one. Okay. So obviously your lovely blinds, I do fall out with these so I try not to touch them. Yeah. They are pinned at the bottom which is a rarity because they're normally broken off. So you can have that on or remove it off. You obviously have got the divider. So if you have got the little ones and you want a bit of privacy or a bit of peace and quiet, you can pull it across. These aren't, nothing in a caravan is man proof. So you need to be gentle with <laughs> everything. Child proof. Yeah, 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 man or child. It's normally one of us that breaks it. No, you can see our daughter breaking. <laughs> yeah, yeah, with the kids, I probably wouldn't put it out because they'll just come running through yeah. it. I think it's a, think it's a fun game. <coughs> Same as one, my niece has got a thing about the fly screen in the door. So you've got a fly screen that comes across your door. Yeah. Okay. And she loves putting it out and like leaning on it and pushing it. And uh, yeah, yeah, kids love it. So it may be an idea not to show them that. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so, moving into the back. But saying, I'll let you open up the wardrobe, I'll let you come past. So, inside your lovely wardrobe, oh, cut your feet off, there's your directional TV aerial. So, to use your aerial, all you simply do is undo that, push it up in the air, and also you can spin it around a full 360 degrees. Okay, fair enough. What the white handle does on the bottom, it sends it from it being horizontal, when you wind that handle around, it tilts it vertical. So all it does, it gives you a full range of trying to pick up a TV signal. Okay. Best advice with these is, um, when you get to a site that you haven't been to before, have a look which way everyone else has got their TV aerials put in and just copy theirs. Because <laughs> believe me, again, you know, like all into divorces, so can be getting a TV <laughs> signal. Because imagine you're already here twisting it, the other one's looking at it in the tent. No, you had it then, turn it back. <laughs> so, they're not guaranteed you'll pick up a TV signal either. Obviously up at Love to Stay, the reek in the big hill, you can see just across the way, it's our TV mast. So you've got a full um, full signal, uh, but obviously if you're in deepest, darkest Wales, it's still no guarantee that you'll be able to pick up a TV signal. Okay. Okay. Yep. Yeah. Right, we're getting there now. We're getting there. So. How many times a day do you do this? Uh, you're on my fourth of the day. <laughs> I don't mind with Swifts, it's when you get a Continental motorhome where everything's in French and that, and you know, yeah, they're more challenging. So obviously under bed storage. Now as you feel, it will stay up with no bedding on, but you'll be amazed by the time you've got your pillows and your bedding and things on, it does get quite heavy. So I would, if you need to do things underneath it, I'll do the majority of it before you uh, you make the bed as such. Right, okay. Okay, but yep. as you see, huge storage underneath there. And it's just the one gas one there and the one across on the other side. But other than that, you can cram it full with whatever you want. Mm. 
Just watch the weight. Yeah, yeah, just watch it because you will find they do go heavy. I mean, it's a good, heavy, decent mattress anyway, but imagine with the bedding and that, it's just extra weight. It is quite hefty, sort of picking it under that. I certainly wouldn't let the kids uh, be playing with it because they'll end up one of them trapped underneath it. So, 